Greetings everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in which we're playing as Lone Star under Cho Bang. Now, I'm going to keep historical AI focuses on because this, this is my very first nation that I'm playing in, in Old World Blues 3.0 in Texas. I've yet to play in Texas, custom game rules like normal, no one's going to be doing anything different, just kind of normal stuff. Now, like I said... This is my very first nation in Texas. I played as Kaiser's Legion in Old World Blues 3.0. I played a little bit in Colorado with Diana. I have played, or am playing, or have played, uh, as the Mojave chapter in Old World Blues 3.0. So I played in Arizona, Colorado, and kind of New Mexico to Arizona-ish, as well as in Nevada, the Mojave portion of California. So, Texas. But before we get too far, the mods that we are using, of course, are Old World Blues, Old World Blues Radio, State Transfer Tool, uh, State Transfer Tool Mod, Colored events and player led peace conferences, but howdy, Cho Bang, here we shall go. Thank God for the Air Force. Originally, bases for weapons of mass destruction. The 12 missile bases dotted around Abilene turned into safe havens from the very same weapons. We had to prioritize what we let into them, however. And let's see, we begin with a very weird assortment of divisions. We use a lot of mercenaries, which. Mercenaries have their uses, but I'm not going to say I'm a huge fan of them. Oh, we got some of the stuff to do. Work is needed. That'd be good. Now let's go ahead and grab... Ooh, Land Doctrine. Conventional Warfare. I think we probably will go Conventional Warfare. Refined Warfare. We don't really use Power Armor right now. Automated Warfare won't do... Won't make a lot of sense. I'm thinking Conventional Warfare for now. I think that'd be probably pretty good. Let's go ahead and start with that, though. Boom, uh, boom, boom. And then eventually go boom, 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 boom. Make that go higher. And we've got a couple military factories in which we are going to need some uh, scout kits. We're going to need a few, some support equipment. And we don't need to see that because we have guns. And I suppose we have motorcycles. That'd be fine with me. And what divisions are we going to train? Well, this is a very weird thing about Lone Star. Their normal infantry actually uses special forces, which I don't necessarily agree with. But there's not really much we can do about that, so we're going to use them anyways. And I guess we could use a few rapid response uh divisions, even though they're only 10 combo with, with recon, which is nice, but, mm, and before I forget, we, oh, oh, I can't do that yet, that's fine, uh, let's see, you guys and you guys, I'm gonna split you guys up into two groups, there you go, there you go, there you go, and let's, uh, time go on, my friends, Colonel Lane Ward, and you, the special forces, will be led by Mr. Tacker, Major Mason Oliver, and then y'all will be led by Captain Marvin Bunch, if you'd like to read about the caps in the 3.0 update, go right ahead, I've already played 3.0, and Marvin Bush. Now, let's see. I will address a few more things, but let's get through another focus. Rebuilding our star. The years that followed the Great War brought much hardship to those that survived. Despite this all, they managed to begin restoring Abilene, making it a shiny star amongst the wastes. Now, the silo is the 578th. During the height of the Cold War, the Dusty Plains around Abilene housed 12 missile silos belonging to the 578th Strategic Missile Squadron, the SMS, while the missiles were decommissioned long before the turn of the 21st century. The missile silos that they resided in remained Air Force property up until the outbreak of the Great War. As missiles started flying, the most senior local commander, Colonel Kerry Owens, had a tough decision to make. He had 12 silos built to survive nuclear detonations and the harsh fallout that would follow them, but far too many important things to put in them. Her men had bunkers, but the local garrison or local National Guard units did not. Saving fighting men would surely help after the apocalypse. Or, Owens could prioritize moving precious resources into the silos, resources that would be invaluable in the future. Or, should he allow all citizens who could make it to shelter in the bunkers? War was her duty not to save American lives. Or was it not? Was it her duty not to save them? With a little hesitation, Owen made her decision. Ooh, oh, hold on here. Is this... I'm assuming Owen made her decision. Carrie Owens, probably is female. He had 12 silos. Is this? Hmm. Anyways, the National Guard took priority. Not bad. Protecting citizens was our first call of duty, which was okay. And then we needed all the stockpile space we could get. That's not bad. We could always make more equipment, even though we have none right now, which we could probably use. But equipment is just equipment, right? Actually, you know what? As much as I want to do this one, because it's hard to get more advanced components, and I know someone's probably not going to like that. I'm not going to click on this one. I'm going to choose this one because I almost never choose stuff like that. And secondly, when we get enough uh, political power, we can go to war with Lubbock. Which doesn't make too much sense, but I don't care. I want to go to war with somebody in the first episode like this. It'll be fun because we have marched through Lubbock. It's the first nation on their way to a westward exp expedition. They control a portion of the I-10 stretching to our west, and as such... 
Much be must be crushed if we successfully reach Red Sun City. Now, I shouldn't really do this, but it doesn't matter anyways. I I, I just want war. Warfare before we have some warfare because we have to make a choice. Victory or the greater good. Victory for the greater good. Because even though we can do Return to Lubbock, if we recall the Lubbock Expedition, I'm not going to recall them. And I don't know. I just want I, I want war early. I want more factories. But what's to buy the apocalypse? While spared a direct hit, Abilene suffered two glancing blows from missiles striking to the north and south, east of the city. Most buildings were flattened by the shockwaves, but more resilient structures in the Dias Air Force Base and the city center remained standing. The survivors of the blast, emerging from the missile silos surrounding the city, found themselves greeted with a dead city. They needed a goal, and fast, lest their despair overtook them, Colonel Owens once again took the helm, making a tough decision to prioritize one of the projects above all others. The following years would be harsh, and many of those that survived in the missile silos around Abilene would perish from malnutrition, illness, or radiation poisoning, including Colonel Owens herself. Despite the overwhelming hardships, the principal project Owens pushed for was completed, and it transformed Abilene into a shining star of hope across the nuclear wasteland that Texas has become. Indeed, it became the Lone Star. That project was ensuring, ensuring access to safe foods and water for all citizens. Not bad, but you can always make more water and electricity. The clearing of the I-20 allowing all to reach Lone Star, which is not bad, I like that extra infrastructure too. Significantly rebuilding Dias Air Force Base, provo proving or providing a safe haven for all. In which Lone Star gets an arms workshop. Now, that's not bad. I really want to do clearing of the I-20 because I like infrastructure a lot and we do get more manpower, but I'm probably going to go with this one because I'm trying to do things that I no don't normally choose. Rebuilding the Dias Air Force Base because I want an extra arms workshop. There's only one arms workshop, which probably isn't really worth it, but that's okay. And Shale's Army Musters, I-10 and I-20, once, once both thrived with trade from the West, destined for Dallas and Austin. Now that Shale's means have all but blocked the I-10, the I-20 blooms, or booms. 20 factories ain't bad, that ain't bad at all. Nice two guns at a time, we're gonna need some more of this, and probably gonna need more of that. But, mutants blocked the I-10. Before the war, there were two great roads into Texas from the southwest, the I-10 and I-20. Even after the Great War, the two roads remained relatively undamaged, leading to a significant flow of trade and people from the west, to Austin along the I-10, and to Dallas along the I-20. I've been up to Dallas once. Twice, actually. As a result, settlements along the two roads began to find their feet again, gradually expanding and rebuilding. That was until the mutants arrived. Led by the charismatic and butt-twisted shale, they made their home along the I-10. Shale's hostility to humans ensured no trade convoys could be travel or could travel along the I-10 until they had moved on. As a result, the I-20 became the only safe and reliable route into both Austin and Dallas. Thanks to this, Lone Star boomed. Our industry expanded to provide for the traders. Not bad. The markets in our city center grew bigger than ever. Okay. And trade along the Colorado needed protection too. Well, that one seems probably like the weakest one. We don't really need to talk about naval vessels probably too much. Level 3 is not bad. <sighs> trade value. We could increase it. We could probably increase it later on anyway. So I want to get another civilian workshop and infrastructure. The formation of the Texas Economic Union. Just under a decade ago, the Texas, or Texan, Economic Union came into force. An agreement between ourselves and the Texan Brotherhood to progress forward together. Now the time has come to renew the pact. There's little doubt it'll pass, but under what condition? And once we get this done, we can pacify Lubbock, huh? All core states are controlled by ourselves or a puppet. They lose manpower, and we get more compliance. That's not bad, actually. Following the determined action of our legions, what past West has... Been cleared through the remnants of what was once Lubbock. Now it is time to pacify the area, ensuring that they are not a threat to our rear flank as we march further west. Friendship across Texas. While Slow and Star is without a doubt an economic powerhouse, military affairs have never been our strong suit. For the most part, we rely on paramilitary groups and mercenary companies. To our southeast lies the Texan Brotherhood of Steel, who are quite the opposite. The Brotherhood has a strong military, advanced tactics, but struggles with a sluggish economy. The solution, therefore, seemed fairly natural. The unification of both nations under one economic treaty under the original agreement of 10-year union would cover trade and industrial relations with Lone Star providing technical know-how to the Brotherhood and the Brotherhood providing military expertise to Lone Star in return. The agreement was ratified by both sides on the turn of the new year in 2265 coming into effect on this day 10 years ago. Whilst the original agreement was time-limited, there is little doubt an extension would be signed once the successes of the agreement became clear. A permanent extension was put before simply last week. The extension passes unanimously, which I like that political power and stability, I do. The extension passed, but closer than many would have wished. That's not bad. Autocracy? Do we like autocracy? Not really. We're mostly people focused on Cho Bang. The extension passed, conditional on greater military advice. We get more command power, which is okay. Army XP. I'm thinking the extension passed unanimously. I like that one the most. And which now we're going to hire additional mercenary units. Eh. 
Let's expand military complexes. While our large consumer goods industry thrives thanks to our dominance of the uh, 20 round Lone Star, our military lags behind, or our military industry lags behind significantly. Efforts mostly made to marry this military focus with our large industrial sector. Very nice. In which we go to war early, and I believe we can call Texas in. Or the Texas Brotherhood. We already are part of Texas. But here's the national spirit. We have a hand gang resurgence, which we lose weekly manpower, resource efficiency gain, and encryption, which ain't too bueno. But we also have fatigue law, man, which we lose political power, division, attack, and daily command power mul gain multiplier, which really sucks. We got control of the I-20, division speed, research speed, and military factor construction speed. We got Brotherhood military advisors, but more daily army XP gain, which is nice. Infantry recruitment, more south attack, and more land doctrine research speed, as well as a Texan economic union, which we lose political power, we get more consumer goods, more construction speed, and efficiency retention. Which looks pretty good. Not bad. Keep building, keep building, building, building. Major Mason Oliver falls ill. Unfortunate. And does it range to clear one of the Vipers? Cool. Let's get one more political power because I want to maximize this. I want to get as much army XP as possible. Victory of the, for the, of the greater good. Well, yeah, we could wait to do that. Hmm. I want to get through my land option as quickly as possible, so maybe we'll wait. Hmm. Economic power loss is 0 0.05 is not very much every day. Uh, some of this stuff is okay. Paint it red. I like that one a lot. So I want to get this one. If possible, victory for the greater good. Which focus is that? Because they're both victory for of the greater good. Oh, for the greater good of the greater good. So apparently we can't get that one. So that kind of sucks. Of the greater good. So we have one, two, three, four. Well, I'll probably just use this one in the end anyways, because these four are pretty good. But recruitable population factor, more war sports. Okay, it's not great. So. Oh well, time to go to war and call in our allies because they will fight for us. And I know this is probably a really bad thing to do. Human ghoul tensions. They got a vice city. Well, they are a vice city. Wealthy. Lubbock Expedition. And they have a generic focus tree. I know I probably shouldn't be going to war right now, but, you know, whatever. It is what it is. We'll help them out. I don't even feel like really commanding them. Ohm's Law. Get some decryption. Follow it up with some secret language. Why not? Yes. Unity of Austin? Sure, why not? Let them all in. Let them fight for us, and we'll take everything when we're done here. So far, looking not too bad. We've lost one guy. We have 11 divisions. The Texan Brotherhood is really good. Actually, we're not even considered a major power. The Texan Brotherhood is. They've been doing a lot of the work, but that's okay. They don't need to have territory up here. Hey, we made an encirclement. Nice. The whole division was encircled. Go, go, go. Go, speedy boys. Go, 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 go. Oh, we're so close. Oh, they might encircle us here. That might have been bad. A massacre outside Lee Town more than the Hand Gang? Our garrison at Lee Town was awakened early this morning by an exhaustive blood-soaked caravan guard collapsing at their steps in the early hours. On the verge of collapsing, he managed to say a few words to our garrison commander, Captain Rose Edmund. Ambush. Road. Massacre. A pause. Hand Gang. Edmund shook her head in disbelief. The Hand Gang? Surely not. They'd been mostly wiped out by the lawmen and Brotherhood Special Forces long ago, and the survivors weren't capable of an ambush, much less a massacre. Dutifully, however, Edmund gathered up her men and marched towards the A-20. The early reports of her scouts were bad, but nothing could prepare her for the sight they were greeted by when they approached the river. The only movement among the bodies was a red banner fluttering. Oh boy. The caravan was still just about fighting back. So we lose manpower and stability, and ex or stability and infrastructure. I don't want to lose infrastructure, so I'm going to go with this one. Just about a five back. That ain't good. Ooh, that's not bad. More attack. Kind of desert fox, though. But we don't have, don't have enough command power, which really suckerinos. Cool. And even though we're struggling, and I probably shouldn't be attacking so much right now, um, we still get more uh, resources. Or army XP, I should really say. Strength and unity. Our economic ties with the Brotherhood allows us to reap significant industrial benefits. Any attempt by one side to increase the profitability of the pact will surely benefit both sides equally. Nice. Unfortunate. Reference manuals, don't mind if we do. Industry, improvised tools. Thank you. Occupied territories. Oh, not eradication. We want pacification and militia. There we go. Beautiful. Just take Lubbock and we'll have them. Destruction. Whoa. Now this is not a historical. Of course, I'm attacking Lubbock too, but still. I was not expecting that. Wow. 
Hey, but Lubbock. Yeah, it's very not historical when I take out Lubbock, but whatever. I suppose I could with Puppet of them, but... I wanted their extra factory. Huh. One extra factory. Pass by Lubbock, march for Fort Summers. We get a war goal for Fort Summers core territories. That's kind of cool. Pass by Lubbock. Eh, we lose manpower there, but... Become owners of Lubbock core states, but we get more compliance. And I want the compliance. I just want them under us. That might have screwed us up later for later on, but whatever. Because now we can't do return to Lubbock. Because they don't exist. So, and they have to be fully independent, but whatever. It's alright. Heck, we could probably go to war with Fort Summers right now, too. But later on. Construction. Beautiful. And just in case things get really bad, you never know what might happen. We go one, two, three, four, five, six. Something like that. There we go. Because nothing bad could ever happen here, right? Right? Yeah, nothing bad could happen here. That's nonsense. A rag, stag, candle shop. If you'd like to read about this, go right ahead. This happens pretty much every single campaign. Stuff about candles and money stuff. We lose some caps, we'll get 1% more stability. Sure, why not? Warlord rises, oh boy. Or a borrow to play one of the old bones, oh boy. Got 9 army XP. Now, I do want to edit these templates, but I'll edit them once we are done with a little bit of a... Issue, we'll say, concerning... Rebellious folk, we'll say. A little bit ahead of, two, two at a time for me. Gliders. Gliders are pretty good. Troll Warren, oh boy. Scavengers, we'll wait. You know, we could do that. We might be able to break over there fast enough, but they're New Mexico, right? Yeah, that's East New Mexico. The Braxos Corridor, North Texas, South Oklahoma. The Panhandle's right here, up Texas. Cool. Yeah, you can kind of see Texas right here. But the Executives, that's part of New Mexico. Whee! Last Lodge is not... Is Last Lodge part of Texas? I don't think so. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. Okay. Whee! There we go. Right around there. Right around there, and then probably like that. Is this city part of East Texas? Yeah. Ooh. Nice. I forgot how... Does it really bulge out that much, East Texas? I guess it does. Cool. Crisis on the Colorado, though. For the second time this season, the lead town garrison has been woken in the early hours by blood-soaked messengers at their perimeter. While she hoped this day would never come, Captain Edmund is no fool and had been making preparations for another massive engagement with a hostile voice, and so sprung into action this time, however. The attack has not come from a caravan on the I-20, but instead on a large convoy following the Colorado southeast to Austin. Edmund's troops marched as fast as they could and reached the battle set, but by the time her garrison arrived, the attacking force was long gone. And instead, all that was left was burnout caravans and canoes, with hundreds of bodies littered on the ground. This was a tragedy of even greater proportions than the last attack. These attackers were efficient, merciless, and able to strike across a large area. Something sinister must be at work, for this kind of attack is far beyond the hand gang. Double our river patrols, this must not happen again, which we lose convoys. Probably fine. Our settlements could be next to expand the garrisons. We get more stability, but we lose manpower. I don't want to lose any more manpower now. The next deck will surely come on the I-80. We lose manpower. I don't want to lose manpower. Double the river patrols. I'd rather get rid of my convoys then. Defend Fort Summers, huh? Oh, there goes the ranchers. Take Kostrum Mars. True to Kaisal, huh? Swear allegiance to Lannis' cohort. Ah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good right now. I'm not gonna lie, but I'm pretty good. Uh, hire additional mercenary companies. The vast majority of the army we feel it is mercenary companies. More inexperienced groups are usually assigned to garrison in our settlements. Whilst larger, more equipped companies can be used as frontline units, should the needs arise. We get more infantry equipment and more uh, two divisions, which will be good. Even though I really don't care for these mercenaries. Eight combat with, that's kind of not great. Mix mercenaries, that's a little better. A little better. Yeah, I definitely want to get rid of this and edit these. I don't mind having special forces. Actually, I really do like having special forces, but... The way it's currently set up is not very bueno. <sighs> Defense on core territory might be a really good. Greater cause. Victory for the greater good. Old guard. For the greater good as well. Hmm. Organization. Well, we probably won't be able to do this. Yeah. Legion tactician. We'll probably be forced to do that one, which is fine. Aircraft company. Well, what do we got down here? Anything here interesting? Not really. Well, I'll just grab this one first anyways, because we can always use that. So, we're currently on Mercenary Primacy, which is... It's okay, get more stability, less attack, which is I don't like. Can we get rid of that? Completed Focus Institute Army Reforms, Reduce Reliance on Mercenary Forces, and Completed Focus Distribute Arms to the Citizenry. Oh, okay, that's not bad. 
Battle plans. Cool. Very good. Very, very good. I should probably save up some money. Or political power, I should really say. For getting another trade route. That'd be good. I could not think of the word there. What is wrong with my brain right now? I don't know. Probably a lot of things. Cutting the desert fox out. What was that? Do we just get something done? Huh. Maybe a modifier already completed. Fatigue law, man, that's not good. Ooh, there goes carbon. Uh, I'm also grab some of this. Motorized flight, not bad, not bad. NCR to clear one of the rapids, cool. Locking them gliders. Hmm, keep building ourselves up even more. There you go. Carbon was annexed. Is that supposed to happen? Shale's army, huh? Um, Shale, well, okay. I gotta play as a super mutant nation soon. I've got to. What the next, huh? I don't know. We'll see what happens. The road of conquest. Yeah, we're going to kill them off eventually. I thought I left this on historical. I mean, the desert rangers have come back and done really well, but the troll worn. Oh, don't tell me they're gonna die. Legionaries in Lone Star. Well, we'll talk about that in just a moment once we do this. Lone Star working trade six point nine, twenty three, thirty three, sixty one. Holy cow! I'm just going to go 61, thank you. Very good. Very much. So, Legionnaires and Lone Star. While our leadership in Lone Star has naturally been aware of the disturbing attacks around Lee Town over the past four months, nobody could have been prepared for the, new, for the news the lawman brought Cho Bang today. According to their men on the streets of Lone Star, two Legionnaires were spotted walking into an alleyway on one of the poorer districts of the city. While unconfirmed by more than a handful of witnesses, Legionnaires have been seen around Lone Star since the Legion scavenging mission to the area more than a decade ago. Even during the expedition, the group stayed far away from the city, making this sighting even more bizarre. If it weren't for the attacks around Lee Town, over the past few months, we'd be able to discount their support with ease. However, the more we think about it, the more it seems to make sense. The coordination of the attacks, the brutality, the expertise of legionaries are at play. The risk is far greater than any of us could have imagined. Legionaries, yeah. Find them now. Reduce the revolt to generals, but some houses will be damaged. The law must be hallucinating, surely. Ooh, prevent us t from taking action against any revolt. Assign you to protect our industry everywhere. Reduce the effects of sabotage in the event of a revolt and stabilize the situation, but it will have costs. Uh, sure, I want more stability. Stability for the nation, because we're probably going to lose it eventually. Does the reservation have anything? Goodbye, Troll Ward. No, nothing there. And Lone Star has become home to Butcher's Pete. Oh, that's cool. We can buy stuff from him later on, but we don't have enough money, because we're at minus 96,000, or minus 96 caps. Cool. Now, I guess technically we could recall the Lubbock Expedition, which actually, that actually makes sense right now, just because, that's just blueprints, so let's recall them, just because we were taking, taking them out. With trouble brewing at home, we need all the experienced hands we can get. Captain Sounders, Sounders and his Lubbock Expedition will still patrol the I-20 beyond the borders. It's time to call them home. Cool, why not? Get more divisions. We love the divisions. Throw you guys right there. Mercenaries, settlement mercenaries, rapid response corps. Actually, you go right there probably then. And seed selection, why not? Good stuff. Always good to have seeds. Marsh for certain summers. Some, some, summers? Summers. Summers. Yeah. Oh, warden and clear warden hang dogs. Oh, actually, huh. I need, I need to play the warden, which looks really awesome. As well as the hang dogs again. Doggy dog, huh? Hello, America. Riches of the box. Ooh, get a research slot there. Get a research slot over here, too. And get your own faction. That's cool. I hope nothing bad is going to happen here. Tube heads. Oh, Mr. T Entertainment. Nothing really there. And that's okay. San Antonio. San Antonio. Been there once. It's urban. Go figure. Let's see. Infantry. Let's grab some warrior training. That'd be good. Maybe get some other stuff too soon. Yeah. Let's see. For our faction, the Texas Economic Union ain't looking too bad. Especially with the super beans down here. But these guys. Shields Army. Hmm. Eden. Oh, what is Eden about? Oh, there goes the Rapids. Scarlet. Oh. Interesting. It's supposed to be the Garden of Eden, or... I don't know. Only 1,200 manpower? That ain't going to be enough. Cool. Hopefully this doesn't go poorly. Crushes Army Clear One Unity of Austin. Oh, hello. Who are you? Lieutenant Crusher. Origin of the Gang. Ah, uh, Generic Focus Tree. What modifiers do they have, though? That seems kind of interesting. Addis Army Remnants. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, Addis. Oh, Addis' Army. Mutant steril Sterility Research. Oh, wow. 
Nikin support programs, cool. And formal tribals. Ouroboros declared war on someone else, and I gotta play them too someday. Oh, we already finished off some more civilian factories, huh? Not bad. Not bad at all. But let's build some more infrastructure first, too. Ooh, see, we can upgrade this stuff here already. Not bad. Good. Lone Star's getting more and more developed. Five plane fires a little bit ahead of time. If we're gonna do anything ahead of time, I'm gonna probably do research. Get some more resistors. We're doing really well. All we need is more uh, motorized vehicles, but we'll get there. Fighting on the streets of Lone Star, no matter what we all hoped, we all knew deep down that this day would come. Starting in the northern outskirts of Lone Star, skirmishes started breaking out across the city between lawmen and hand war band insurgents. At first, limited in scope and length, ever more clashes are sparking as it has become clear that the lawmen alone are ill-prepared to deal with the insurgency. Whilst the attacks are nowhere near total war, they have the possibility to involve into it. And fast. Based on the current situation, fighting will probably reach the central districts. Within two to three days, we need to take action to prevent this, or God help us all. Divert all units to uprising must be crushed. Lose stability manpower. Posing or posting extra units to a Lone Star will reduce the number of enemy divisions that spawn around Lone Star. Or defender settlements will lose stability and a little bit less manpower. Diverting units to the minor settlements will reduce enemy divisions spawning around settlements and power the lawmen to deal with this crisis. Increase the number of lawmen divisions spawned on the outbreak of the Civil War. Lose stability. They do get less. They do get more attack. But let's go with divert all units. We want to protect our capital. And we'll see what happens. Hopefully, nothing bad will happen, right? Oh, you... Let's go with Mysterious Stranger. We want as much attack as possible. Then again, we could have chosen Mysterious Stranger, but nah, we good. And it's time for a little bit of a conflict. The uprising spreads. We hope that the bulk of the war band's forces were being used in an assault on Lone Star, but that appears far from the case. In the far north and far south of our territory, we have received reports of local garrisons being besieged by invading war bands. If Fleet Town and Haskell has not yet fallen, they will soon, especially Haskell to the north, where it appears the Legion divisions joined, joined the attack on the local garrison. Even greater news comes from north of Lone Star itself, where fresh enemy divisions have been signed or sighted, preparing an all-out attack on the capital. In response to the threat, the lawmen have mobilized themselves into military-style divisions, and all mercenary divisions divisions have been put on full alert. As soon as we have a fight on our hand, pals, we better give it our all. Send word to the Brotherhood, we need their help here. Or Ave True to Kaiser. Ooh, that looks like fun, but we're gonna go with this. Send word to the Brotherhood. So, y'all are done with that. And don't tell me we lost that many divisions. Oh, boy. Because I want to use you guys to crush these guys down here quickly. If possible. What type of divisions did we get? Lawmen. Go help do that for now. Uh, I'm gonna take you, actually, and just go straight down here and encircle somebody fast. Move fast. Wow, that's three divisions. Do not let them get together. Oh, they linked up. Come on. How dare you. That's a okay. case. So you guys get down there. That's fine. They want to attack, huh? Oh, are they going to try and circle me? No, 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 no. No. A thousand times no. Come on, get moving, get moving. Recall the Lubbock expedition. Good. And we shall do uh, authorize I mean, I'm gonna, uh, distribute arms to citizenry, primary or mercenary primacy with mercenary front lines. Mercenary, da, da, da. We actually get more attack. That's not bad. And more. Yeah, let's, let's do that one. Why not? So we need every citizen to be able to defend themselves if we're to ward off the threat emerging from our nation, and so they must all bear arms. Three more divisions. Great. Help support the attack over there. Kill these divisions off. Please kill them off. Keep them in place. Actually, I could send you up here. Can I call in anyone? I cannot call in the brother because this is technically a civil war. Oh, we're not even a leader. Oh, that sucks. <clears throat> you guys are attacking here, which is fine. If I poke over here, that might provoke some people. Did I got encircled myself? Are you kidding me? You know what? Hold then. You go that way. No, I said you hold. You can go that way then. Screw these guys. We're still gonna re-encircle them. And kill them off. That'll be good right there. They're taking all this territory, which is actually pretty good for us. If we take Haskell, we could probably just win. Please don't encircle me. Hey, see, we won. Not bad, see? All you gotta do is take out Lubbock. And we're good. Glorious. Absolutely glorious. Oh, we canceled this. No, that sucks. Oh, whatever. And we'll come back and do this one later on. Victory of the greater good. Following the weeks of grueling fighting across the territory, we finally managed to defeat the unified or reunified hand war band and the legionaries that supported them. It's time to catch our breath and think of the future. Not that bad.
just make sure that they go somewhere else. All right, at this point, we're going to have to do this, because Lubbock veterans are cool and all, but patrolmen, we're going to duplicate this, and then these guys are going to be normal inf. Cool, so normal infantry. We're going to have to remove you. How much as I keep using you? And why did that come back? Ten combat width. Just normal infantry. That'd be good. We have some, actually some equipment to use it, so that's not bad. Uh, which groups can we actually convert? You guys? No. You guys? No. You guys? No. Okay, seriously, who can I convert? These guys? Okay. There we go. Not bad, not bad. Oh. There we go. Not bad. Ah, the old order triumphant. With the last pockets of the warband being eliminated as we speak, it seems all but certain that we have survived the insurgency of the warband and their legion allies. Fortunately, a legion involvement was limited and not a full-scale invasion as we first feared. It appears instead that the groups were remnants of the legion scattering, scavenging group sent into Texas over a decade ago, who remained behind to attempt to take over and woe, or woo Kaisal's favor. Certainly, if they had succeeded, it would have been a masterstroke, granting the legion a deep base in Texas. However, they fortunately failed decisively at that. Much is left to do, however. We've had to make extensive diplomatic and economic concessions to win against the war ban, and we will need time to recover again. Moreover, we still have plans for developing the Texan Economic Union to deal with. Exciting times lay ahead. Forward we go, stronger than before. A revolt in the West, East in the Flames. Oh boy. Uh, oh, that does not look good. Revolts in the West. Why do we lose more manpower still? Well, someday I have to do this side of the tree, but today's not that day. we got all this stuff to do. So, how do we do this? Rekindle the economic union? We might as well, right? So, whilst once a great strength of our nation, we've allowed the Texan economic union to fizzle out while we're busy fighting the war ban, we must reverse this. So, I've got a question for y'all. Ooh, what's that? Restart the turbines. Scrap the turbines. Restart the turbines. Well, we get some of that stuff, or some of that stuff. We get a bonus. What do you think is better? Restarting the turbines, or scrapping them turbines? Let me know in the comments below. Well, that's pretty much going to conclude today's episode. I think we've done very, very well, even though things did not turn out exactly as we wanted, but that's alright. If you enjoyed today's episode, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we don't have the Alamo chapter under us, and we have a good time in Lone Star. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.